Now, I want to switch gears just a little bit to so talk about uh, VA stuff. So, Tone, when we, we met each other, I don't know, it's been uh, eight months ago or so. Seems like forever, Mark. And it does. Mm-hmm. Seems like a lifetime. Has it really only been eight months that you guys have known wow. each other? I think I it know. was probably uh, less than December, that. January time frame. Somewhere right? in there. Somewhere, wow, somewhere in there. We're all fresh to meet Yeah, we're all fresh other. to How say, yeah. For sure. So, and, and you got started, when did, so you hired your first VA not too long ago, and you're up to three VAs mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know one of them is kind of cross-training into a, mm-hmm. another division of another mm-hmm. company, but mm-hmm. um, so mm-hmm. when you got started with this, how has been your process of introduction to it, the concept, and then actually going through that process mm-hmm. and going from one to two to three? You know, I, I really... It's very tough to use me as an example because my very first VA was like he was born of my rib. I mean, everything I told him to do, he understood. Like, he's a second brain to me, and he was instantly on board, like everything. He's just a phenomenal guy, um, very talented. And, uh, you know, we've I've interviewed a bunch since then, and there's not been many like him. So uh, you can get that. You can have that home run hit. I think there's a lot of it has to do with me too because when I brought my VA in, I brought him just as a regular basic telemarketer. That was all his job was to be. But I have a, I had a training curriculum and a telemarketing manual, and I spent a lot of time training him and then onboarding him into my customer management software. And as I was doing all this thing, all these things, my mind started to create all these ideas on how I could utilize him. And we started to really integrate it, which I think gave him a bunch of confidence in the fact that I had so much confidence in him. He didn't know that I was just um, uh, inherently, you know, a fat, lazy Mexican that wanted to get some of this work off my plate. He thought I was actually a businessman that was really had all these great ideas. And he took them that way and he went and he rolled with them. And he would put together like the things that I would would vocalize, he would put together and put on paper. And um it was very good. So I think it was really, you know, uh, I'm being funny and I'm being humble, but and I'm also give, being complimentary to him. But hiring a VA was probably one of the best decisions I ever made as, a, as far as um, being able to see that it's not just me. So he was enable, he was actually able to produce things that I didn't have time to produce that I knew that I needed for a long time. And he's continued to do that, and it grew so fast that it spawned another company. Uh, now we have a telemarketing business uh, where we create cold calling culture for companies um, and we've got clients and it grew into something. So that's how our my first experience ever with the VA went. The two subsequent VAs, one was to replace him and he's not the same as the first guy. He's strictly a telemarketer at this point. Uh, we'll see if he can grow into maybe a telemarketing leader, but right now he's doing his job. But then I also hired an executive assistant, and the executive assistant just started with us. Uh, but uh, we interviewed. I interviewed. Or we listened. To, I listened to forty recordings, narrowed it down to a certain amount of people. I think eight. Of the eight people, everybody sounded the same in the interview. They all wanted to be the best for us, and they wanted to help grow our company. And I gave them an assignment to tell me what they would do with our social media department if I was to hand them over the social media department. And everybody said, well, I'm going to do this and do that. Well, this one person did a 17-page slideshow uh, breaking down every single different part of the social media and explained exactly how we would go about attacking each platform with music in the background she poached pictures from my facebook and all my (laughs) logos and turned it into a full-blown toned home presentation looked like she worked for me for 20 years and went and did everything i needed to do and that was an assignment when she wasn't even hired so she she won the job and now she's my executive assistant and and uh you'll find some really so i I said at first oh i'll never find another dennis but then we found iral and who knows who we'll find if we yeah, keep I've looking. got several of those myself. We talk about home runs. I've hit kind of one after another. Yeah. A friend of mine uh, who hired recently, he's just the same thing. He's like, he hired this guy. I think he pulled the trigger like on a Thursday or a Friday, and he was due to start on the following Monday. He spent the whole weekend doing a whole bunch of stuff for this guy to get him ready for the Monday when he actually started his job. And he's been, he's been over the moon excited about the the progress made. So. We do pretty good, and to your point, 
I mean, we had 40 some people that screening. So when you go through our process, we find a whole bunch of talent and then we start that screening process. But by the time it even gets to you, we've done some screening Mm -hmm. and then you help with the screening because it's flavor, right? It's what you want. And then we just continue to refine that process. So it makes it kind of easy. Well, that's, I think, something that people definitely underestimate. And I've heard a couple of times, oh, well, I could probably just go and find a VA But I don't think they think about that screening process, the amount of interviewing that goes on, and then just the the nuances of hiring someone yourself versus having someone whose job it is to find the right fit for you, and then also create the culture of accountability and help that, that you guys do, because... A VA that you hire just by yourself, they're they're out alone. They work from home. They don't have any coworkers. It's You're just so you right. and them. I mean, it's not just VAs, Heather. It's every employee, whether it's overseas or here, business owners are professional failure makers. Hmm. We set up people to fail. Um, 90, 90 plus, when I, you know, they say that it's 85% of all statistics are made up, right? Um, <laughs> but more than 90% of the time, um, we set people up for failure. I have hired so many people and set them up for failure. It's in it's uh, inconceivable because because I've been hiring since I was 19 years old. I became uh, a manager in a company that just had me hire all day long and fire all day long for four years straight when I was 19. And I just look back at those days at how incredibly bad I was at that job. And by the way, I was ranked number 56 out of 150 in the country. So. I was, and that was from a zero point. So, I mean, I thought I was doing great. But looking back, I mean, all those poor people that I hired and fired, I mean, it's just brutal. Well, and that's another thing. I mean, I talk to people all the time, and my question is, how do you know your employees are winning every day? And if you can't define that, then I guarantee (laughs) they can't define that either. So, yeah. How do we get to the point where it's black and white? It doesn't need to be some ethereal thing. Oh, they're doing a good job means almost nothing to me. And I always ask that. What does a good job mean? Well, how did that very clearly be shown? Because if I was working a job, which at this point, I don't think I could go back to working a job. I've been been on my own for too long. I'd be the worst (laughs) employee. Um, But I've been put in that position. I, I was 25 running a $2 million division of the company, had no idea what I was doing, just hope, wing, and prayer, and natural ability. And I had no idea what it meant to do a good job. And when I asked, I was not given a clear answer. And I, I mean, I count that as one of my big failures because it did not feel good to go into work every day and not know how to win. Well, the VAs that, that, um, like with Mark's point on the VAs, um, you know, Krukus has a support team that, um, you know, follows through, asks questions, follows up with the client, does a bunch of little detailed things that, you know, again, you made a great point. You know, people say a lot, well, I, you know, I, why would I need you to hire a VA? Because they've looked online. People who are aware of VAs, which is like this, it's like 50-50, right? Maybe mm-hmm. you've heard of some, maybe you haven't. But people who have heard of VAs and have researched VAs know how easy it is to hire a VA. But there's a word missing, and that's successful, right? Yeah, that's right. Hiring a VA does not guarantee hiring a successful VA or having a successful Mm -hmm. VA experience. We should put into Krukus's advertising, we will hire you a successful VA because (laughs) that's that's what you don't get when you do it on your own because you don't have a hiring team and a follow-up team on to the client and a follow-up team behind the scenes and a bunch of people that know how to do this that can help that person along the way. There's just so many, uh, so upside. I'll wrap it up. I don't take too long but i'll wrap it up with this like you know you hear people in my in the remodeling business talk about you know if they I, I tell them well we do windows we do doors we do patios we do rooms we do kitchens we do bathrooms they'll be like oh you're a jack of all trades and then all of a sudden my red flames come out of my ears i'm not a jack of all trades we're a master of all trades right because i hire a floor person to do floors or an ac person to do acs and they see people have master certifications and the flooring people have master certifications so we're a master of all trades now in when it comes to vas let's just say hiring Hiring is its own very specific skill. There's a lot of little tactics and questions and things that you need to know. For instance, giving them assignments to let them showcase their talent, which Mark does with the uh, marketing, the social media marketing people, which I did with my executive assistant. Um, 
which we do, you know, having giving them assignments. Those are things that don't occur to everybody. And that's just one. We'll, we'll share that secret. But there's a lot of secrets, not even secrets. There's just a lot of things that we do that make RVAs more successful than you doing it on your own. And and you really need, you know, in Spanish, they say el zapatero a sus zapatos for all the Mexican Americans that are listening. But that's the shoemaker to his shoes. Right. Let the person do what they're good at. Yeah. You know. Cool. All right, we are out of time, though. We got to wrap it up. But uh, thanks for the the insight on that. The, it's not quite as easy as maybe think it, people think it is. I know, Imad, you work pretty hard um, at your hiring your staff as well. So, um, all right, as we wrap up the show, quick reminder: check out our latest podcast or catch video version of the show anytime by visiting our website at satalkradio.com. That's gonna be it for us. You guys have a great week. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Water. Good. Thanks, Mark.